In this new century, Americans and Europeans alike will be required to do more, not less. Partnership and cooperation among nations is not a choice. It is the only way, the one way, to protect our common security and advance our common humanity. in the United States to carry out a phrase his father used, and that is a new world order. I appeared before the Congressional Committee to tell what I knew of activities which might lead to an attempt to set up a fascist dictatorship. The potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. President Bush signed a formal agreement that will end the United States as we know it. And he took the step without approval from either the U.S. Congress or the people of the United States. The secret organizations of the world power elite are no longer secret. No, I'm not comfortable with that at all. Who elected these guys to run the planet? They are the elitists. They feel they should run the world for their own selfish interests. Now we can see a new world coming into view. A world in which there is the very real prospect of a new world order. Bilderberg is making great progress toward a world government, and only an educated, informed public can stop them in their tracks. It's good to be back at the Council on Foreign Relations. As uh, Pete mentioned, I've been a member for a long time and was actually a director for some period of time. I never mentioned that when I was campaigning for re-election back home in Wyoming. <laughs> Let us never tolerate outrageous conspiracy theories. Everything is set into place. In which every human being on planet Earth is ultimately responsible for the policies that are being formulated at the international level. It is a big idea. A new world order. President Bush uh, said that the new world order was uh, in, 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 in tune and that's what they were working for. The UN is part of that government. They're working right now very significantly for a North American Union. That's why there's a lot of people in Washington that don't care too much about our borders. They have a philosophic belief that national sovereignty is not important. It's also the reason I have made very strong suggestion that we need not be in the United Nations for our national security. In terms of watching the emerging nations, trying to figure out where they fit and how we fit relative to them and so on. And so these institutions that uh, the affirmative task we have now is, uh, is to actually um, uh, create uh, uh, a new world order because the global order is changing again. And the institutions and the rule that worked so well in the post-World War II era for decades, uh, they need to be strengthened and some have to be changed. So we have to do what we do best. We have to lead. We have to lead. We have to update the global rules of the road. We have to, we have to do it in a way that maximizes benefits for everyone, because obviously it's overwhelmingly in our interest. This is not a zero-sum game. It's overwhelmingly in our interest. The FEMA camps, now they have left to do is take the guns. Mr. and Mrs. America, turn them all in. based upon our research into the power structure behind the push for global government. The formation of a global government would require the cooperation of a large group of people from many nationalities and backgrounds. An organizational structure would be required to guarantee fairness, establish hierarchy, and avert betrayal. 
such an organization would need to demonstrate a rich history of trust and cooperation between members. Prevailing thoughts on this subject are that such an organization would have its roots in Zionism, Satanism, or Freemasonry. Let us first consider Zionism, which seems an unlikely choice for the following reasons. The unfolding world government requires the full cooperation of many different ethnic groups. However, history has shown that different ethnic groups rarely trust each other enough to willingly allow one ethnic group to dominate the others and lead them in a particular direction. For instance, you wouldn't find early Irish American immigrants handing over the reins of power to Italian American immigrants or Jewish American immigrants, and vice versa. The flaunting of ethnic differences immediately sets people at odds with each other. Typically, they do not form close bonds and higher levels of trust. For a Zionist world government to work, many different ethnic groups would need to empower a tiny group of Zionists, most of whom are Jews, and in essence relinquish their destiny to this highly ethnic group. As many of you are aware, Zionism is a nationalistic idea which supports a Jewish nation-state and a territory defined as the land of Israel. Pro-world government ethnic groups in China, India, and Pakistan would have to buy into Zionism to a large extent and base their trust upon relationships emanating from such a belief. And if you believe that Zionists are dominating and controlling the largest Eastern nations, it is important to consider that countries such as China, India, and Pakistan have sizable nuclear arsenals. Could these nations be bullied into submission by a scant few followers of Zionism? And if they could, would the leaders of these Eastern nations continue to enthusiastically support the idea of world government and champion a global banking structure run by a dominant group of Zionists? Speaking from a purely historical standpoint, it remains highly unlikely. And yet, the leaders of the Eastern nations are in full support of the emerging world government and its banking structure. Some say that Freemasonry is controlled by Zionists. If this were the case, Freemasonry would surely be forced to carry out the agenda of Zionism. And because the agenda of Zionism is very particular to Israel, it would be obvious to all ethnic groups within Freemasonry that an agenda of Israeli favoritism was being carried out. And so we would arrive back at the problem of Zionism's unlikely ability to unite different ethnic groups under a world government. Do not misunderstand our position. We feel that Zionism is a legitimate problem. We realize that Israel receives special treatment from many countries. And we are fully aware that Israeli agents helped carry out the 9-11 false flag attacks. However, we are not convinced that Zionism is the root of world government. There is a good possibility that many globalists are pretending to be Jews and or Zionists so they can hide behind the anti-Semitic defense. Furthermore, real Jews and Zionists who advocate world government are likely utilizing the anti-Semitic defense as well. Using sympathy to gain support has worked wonders as a psychological operation, and we see no reason that those behind a world government would not employ such a tactic. In our quest to uncover the root of global government, the next possibility we might consider is Satanism, which has its roots in the Abrahamic religions of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Although Satanism has come to encompass a variety of New Age philosophies, it can never truly escape the confines of the religious structure from which it sprang. Surely there have been some moderately successful attempts to morph Satanism into atheism, but because its origins lie in the Abrahamic religions, it does not easily translate into other world religions and belief systems. Therefore, it is unlikely that a belief in Satanism would unite a Chinese Taoist, Japanese Buddhist, or Indian Hindu under the banner of world government. However, many world leaders with these Eastern religious backgrounds are deeply involved in the push for a world government. These men and women could be hiding a satanic belief, but again, it remains unlikely. So, which organization assures its members that they will not be betrayed at some point in the future, or hung out to dry like so many Middle Eastern despots? Our third option is Freemasonry. Unlike the last two possibilities, modern Freemasonry is an all-inclusive organization. Atheists are permitted to join through the Grand Orient de France branch of Masonry. Other Masonic lodges merely require the belief in any supreme being. Freemasonry spans a variety of ethnic groups. Historically, it has fostered trust and cooperation between members of different cultures, races, and religions. There are Masonic lodges in many parts of the world, including Europe, the Middle East, China, India, the Americas, and Africa. Lodges even exist within the military hierarchy of many countries. 
For instance, the U.S. government allows Masonic lodges within all branches of the military. Masonic symbols and landmarks are strewn across almost every continent, from the Masonic obelisks in Israel, Paris, Washington, D.C., Vatican City, and London, to the Freemason Rothschild-funded Israeli Supreme Court with its massive Masonic pyramid complete with an all-seeing eye at the pinnacle, to the Masonic Temple in Forest Hills, Ohio, which was made possible by Rockefeller estate donations, to the lodges located within the former British colonies of Hong Kong and India, to the Masonic layout of Washington, D.C., the Mason-donated Statue of Liberty, and the symbology on American money itself. No one can deny that Freemasonry has infected almost every country on the planet. Based upon such criteria, Freemasonry could easily be the organization behind the push for world government. There is also abundant historical evidence that the Freemasons have used their power for nefarious purposes. Freemasons were behind the murder of William Morgan, the Jack the Ripper murder cover-up, the French Revolution, the plot to kill Archduke Ferdinand, plans for world wars, judicial and police corruption in the UK, and the mafia-related activities of the P2 Masonic Lodge, to name a few. Interestingly enough, the ruling body of Freemasonry never accepts responsibility for any wrongdoing. Instead, they devote all of their energies to deflecting bad press and denying involvement in any activity deemed harmful to the organization. Masons have proven to be some of the most accomplished liars on the face of the earth. Freemason oaths to aid and assist any distressed Freemason and never reveal anything related to the Brotherhood when given under a Masonic sign, except in matters of murder or treason, are mostly to blame for their numerous deceptions. It is important to remember that Freemasons did absolutely no charitable work until after Freemasonry was banned in several U.S. states around the year 1830 for the organization's involvement in murder and conspiracy. During this time, American Freemasons essentially went into hiding and voluntarily closed lodges to avoid condemnation from a rightfully angry citizenry. In 1870, the Freemasons quietly reemerged and created the Shriners, whose focus was to be fun, fellowship, and charity. The Shriners branch of Freemasonry was designed to put a good face on the recently besmirched organization and nothing more. Today, the Freemasons continue with their nefarious plans while using the Shriners Children's Hospital as a defense mechanism. In the end, this strategy is no different than the mob operating a soup kitchen to garner support. It is both deceptive and pathetic. Based upon years of research and a careful process of elimination, we are now confident that Freemasonry is the driving force behind a world dictatorship. We are also convinced that there are no good Freemasons. All members are fully aware of the organization's many trespasses over the centuries, as well as their treacherous oaths, yet they refuse to resign. Unlike most taxpayers who only pay a fraudulent government to avoid lengthy prison sentences, all members of Freemasonry willingly donate money to the Freemason organization and are therefore complicit in the activities of the whole. We encourage the viewer to produce anti-Masonic videos, websites, and spread this message by word of mouth. You may also wish to hold protests outside your local lodge. Freemasons hate bad publicity and they deserve every bit of it. Your hard work and dedication can bring about the downfall of the abominable Freemason Mafia. We are seeking a worldwide ban against Freemasonry and life sentences for all 5 million or so members who refuse to resign. A Masonic database of names and faces must be compiled. These men and women must not escape justice.